Okay. Yeah. So, you just show this tool first. So these are eight different tools used for restringing. It's parallel pliers, which are going to need a tuning a T lever with the tuning tip. A start uh, wire snipper things. A little what do you call that again? Tuning tuning pin punch. It's made out of a drill rod. A uh, tuning lever, a regular hammer. And this, which is a little coil maker. I'll show you how that works. And this is a little coil tightener and a string spacer on the other end. Uh, okay. So I have a couple of these regrets and I'm polishing them before I set them in. Yeah, I can zoom in. Yeah, looks pretty good. Anywho, here's the piano wire. Oh shoot, I should have gloves on. Yeah, actually, it doesn't matter that much. Want me to pause it? No, no, just. I'll just do this with my gloves. So, anyway. Where, where's your gloves? Uh, we can edit this. Just. No, 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 no. I'll just. Okay, I'll just. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't need ones because the other ones are all. Wood on these gloves. I smell a lawsuit. Seriously, that could have totally impaled me. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, you showing me a graph? Yeah. Bridge graph. So yeah, most pianos don't have bridge graphs, which are these things. Uh, they have uh, bridge pins, which are these things, which are a lot easier to work with for technicians. But this is a a unique feature that Summer was experimenting with when this piano was made. So it's one of the only pianos in the world that has this. In what year? 1927. Alright. I don't know how long they were experimenting with that design, but there's only <laughs> one piano maker in the modern day that's actually still using bridge eye graphs. It was an Australian company. It's kind of a little, I mean, engineering gimmick, if you call it that. So what are you going to do now? Uh, You're gonna take a, a piece of wire from the coil. So this is size 15. You gotta uh, make sure I'm using the right size all the time. So anyway, it goes through this plate I grab here, and then it's gonna go through this bridge I grab here. And that's going to go around. Hold on. It's caught on something. Whoa. This is kind of why it's so difficult to work on a piano with red grass, because you've got to snick it through. So then it's going to go around this hitch pin right here. Let me make sure that it's a nice one. It's going to bend. I'm going to overbend it because that'll help it form a proper loop with time. So there's the loop. It goes back through this bridge I graph into that pull there. And it's going to go back through the plate the graph. Ah, get it through. There we go. So much weight so that doesn't come off. Okay, now we can cut it. 
so use these nice little cutters. Uh, usually, traditionally, they use four finger widths to measure the length past the tuning pin hole. Oops, just crimped it. Because you're getting a little tiny bit dull. There we go. Whoa! My eye! <laughs> Four finger widths, that should be the proper length beyond the hole to make a nice three coils on a tuning pin. So here's your tuning pins. See, we already used about half of them. Uh, okay, and that goes in the coil winder, like so. The T lever. So I thread this through the hole in the tuning pin. Can you see it? Yeah, barely. See, there's a little hole. It's not focusing. Just there we yeah. go. Oh, that's good enough. Um, and then there's a little machine screw on there that helps get a coil started. So you turn this two and a half times, making two and a half coils. Alright. There's about two and a half. And now, should be about the right length to reach this tuning pin hole. And then I'm going to hammer it in. It's going to be kind of loud for a second. I have the tuning pin punch right here. Goes in the rest of the way. Approximate height for now. Okay, now the other side of the wire is going to go into another tuning pin. So I'm going to cut this four finger widths down from the next hole. And then another tuning pin goes on that. T-lever, where's the T-lever? Yeah. Okay, and another two and a half coils. Uh-oh. Shoot. Okay, so this first part of the wire that just gets bent and goes through that hole is called the becket. To tighten it in a second. So here's your two and a half coils for this next wire. And this is going to go in the hole. Make sure. so loud, it's kind of interesting from a physics perspective, because uh, we have all these different wires, undamped, tuned to various frequencies, so uh, they resonate sympathetically with almost any noise, so for example if you, if you had them all tuned to one note, and then you sang that note, then they would all vibrate sympathetically. If you sang a different note, they wouldn't vibrate, unless it's at a certain interval. Uh, but since we have so many tuned to so many different notes, they'll pick up almost any noise and vibrate sympathetically with it. So if you had just all tuned to the same ham to the same note, you're hammering in, and they would all sing at that at that note instead of just resonating with the noise. And that's uh, the same way. A reverb coil works, I think. Okay, that's the next one. Okay. So now we use the tuning hammer and the t coil tightener. Turn on this hole. So this is what's used to actually tune the piano once it's all strung, but 
or you could use it to tighten these. The preliminary purpose. Good intention on there. So this coil tightener helps to form a proper coil. There we go. So we have three tight coils on there when it's done. And the brackets are popping out a tiny bit. doesn't really matter what they're tuned to at this point, as long as there's tension on them. But, I want to fit them kind of even. So, here's their parallel pliers. I'm going to tighten the buckets. I don't know if you can, probably can't see that. But, it popped out just a tiny bit. And now they're good. And if we do that about 50 more times, we'll have the uh, full treble restrung. Then do the base. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.